Hi, my name is Dawn, and I am currently living in and building out a Ford E350 Super Duty box truck with an 8x12 Marathon box. This isn't the first vehicle I've lived in. My journey started over two and a half years ago in a car. That's right, a car, an early 2000s Toyota Avalon. And so after that, I actually started van life officially within early 2000s Toyota Sienna. I was a real fan of the Toyota brand. And that was a super loyal van that lasted me a long time, in fact, the longest time that I've lived in a vehicle, I lived in that Toyota Sienna, and I loved it. It took me amazing places. And then I got lucky, and I was able to get a Chevy Express full-size van, which was quite the upgrade from the minivan. Still low roof, but a lot more room to have home space in. But even still, after almost two and a half years, I was ready to stand up. I wanted to have a standing height vehicle and I had been looking at all my options and I had kind of fallen in love with the box truck idea. It wasn't a super popular option but it really wasn't about that. I liked that it was flat, that all the walls were square, that there wasn't really a lot to rip out of them to start building back up in them again and so I began the journey of building it out. However, Recently, the catalytic converter was stolen from under my box truck. I will be referencing those videos in the video description if you want to look back at those, but I'm basically going to talk about taking care of the problem in this video and moving forward. So what is up everyone? You might already be noticing new things about the box truck. I painted a lot of my screws white yesterday so hopefully they aren't popping out too much visually. I mean like if you were in the box truck and you want to get all of them on walls you're gonna see the screws. I still need to make a prettier framing mechanism for this and I have a plan for it. Um, and I hung these yesterday and it's basically a shelf nothing's going up here because this is for mickey and he's already been up here multiple times there's actually two of them there's another one over there um uh, so like i've been busy moving forward on the build filming it but before i get completely back into those videos i did want to take a chance uh, to talk about the catalytic converter. I'm also at the laundromat. The laundromat is across the street. Um, and I'm actually about to run over there and change my laundry out from the uh, washing machine to the dryer. I've heard people complain about laundromats, but honestly, like, it's pretty easy. Like, even when I lived in my van, like, I loved it. I could, I've had to use laundromats, like, living in apartments and houses where I was renting rooms and there was no laundry anyway. I mean, sometimes there was a laundry room in the house, sometimes it wasn't. I've always been sharing that with someone. Um, so the convenience of having my whole house parked outside the laundromat actually hasn't been bad for most of van life. It's something I hear like complained about a lot, I guess from people who are <laughs> more used to having um, a washer and dryer in their home. Um, and since I, you know, have fallen in and out of that convenience and it's always been shared with other people anyway, um, it, it hasn't been that bad to be able to drive my own personal house outside of the laundromat and then like take my clothes to the laundry, bring them back in once they're done and then immediately put them away. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's move on to what this video is actually about, which is my catalytic converter. Now we'll say this video is sponsored, it is in fact sponsored by Skillshare. I will be talking about them at the end of the video. So we're gonna circle back to that. Um, so that will be dropped at the end because girl got to pay for stuff and girl just paid for something huge. And that was, I went back to the shop after a lot of sleeping and thinking on it. I went back to the shop um, uh, that I was going to before. I'm going to take a sip of my, my sparkling water here. No, it's not alcohol. It's just sparkling water. Because I asked myself, what do I really want? Um, and... I wanted peace of mind and I wanted it to be over with. I was sick of 
thinking about it. I was sick of having to make decisions about it. Um, but it was, it was going to be a huge financial hurt. So I ultimately decided to go back to, um, the shop because I did have a good feeling about Mario, um, who is the guy who owns Mission Muffler in, um, Hayward. And, uh... The reason why I had a good feeling about him, there was this old lady who was about, I don't know, she was like in her 80s, she must have been, this old black lady. Um, and she came into the shop and um, apparently he had helped her because he realized like her situation was highly compromised. Um, uh, she, she was, you know, living on very limited income and uh, the repair he did for her at a loss to himself um, I found out all this information later, but I'm just going to give you the full content text of what was going on. Um, wasn't enough for something she needed to get done to her car. And he was like, oh man, I'm sorry. I actually don't do that work, but here's a guy. And I kind of overheard that conversation and I could tell he was really hurting, um, with trying to help her. And there was just this thought in my heart, like, just because these two muffler companies aren't agreeing on what satisfies California's law requirements doesn't mean he's doing it to be wrong or sneaky or to exploit money. He just genuinely believes that the converter I bought in will not pass smog. Like he did his due diligence to really research and see if it was a legal converter for California. And he agrees that California is stupid as well. Um, so Mario is a good guy. And I had a lot of good feeling about him from the moment I talked to him on the phone before I got in his shop, even though we ended up falling into that situation where I was like, well, I don't, understand why this <laughs> muffler shop which happens to be too far away for me to go to but provided uh this catalytic converter is saying that it's legal and you're not and you know the good thing about getting it from him is he guarantees his work so if i go get smog and this catalytic converter does not pass smog you know, it is warranted as work done by his shop <laughs> um, where, you know, he 100% installed it saying this is correct. I have done my due diligence to check and this is correct. And so there is a guarantee with just getting the part through him that I don't get otherwise in this current situation that I'm in. Um, if I could physically get to the shop that provided the part and it wasn't so far away, um, which, you know, it, it was a gift, but still if like, it was like, they were going to do the install and they were going to say, we've done our due diligence and we verify it's legal, then it would have been worth it to go to them. But since that's not an accessible situation and I really feel like he was looking out for me. I decided to go ahead and let him do the work. And like I said, I'd watched him interact with other people, including his elderly patron. Um, and it, it moved me, you know, that particular interaction. Um, and he actually did help me out. I'm not going to go into details how. It still cost me more money <laughs> than I wanted to take out of my bank account. Um, the, the kind of like if something major happens, which something major did, but the major, uh, the something, if something major happens, cushion I had is kind of uh, gone. Um, and so I will have to rebuild that up. It's not like it was a lot anyway. I mean, like if a catalytic converter took it out, um, it wasn't a lot anyway, but it was nice to have. And something major did happen. I got, you know, my catalytic stolen off of my truck. Um, so technically the money went to what it was supposed to go to, but then that puts you in the position of no longer having the money. <laughs> um, and so it's just something I'm going to have to work back up and it's going to be a slow work back up. Um, as I'm still in the middle of the build, luckily a lot of the major items I have to buy have been bought. They are in storage and just ready for me to install them. There is 
a couple of more big ticket items that I want to get for the truck. I want to beef up the solar system. I've been struggling to um, have my jackery keep up with the drain. And it's not the jackery's problem. It's just a limitation in the amount of solar I'm getting. You know, if I could plug into, like, physical electricity every day, I would. Sometimes I do at the theater. I just run an extension because I set up... Um, it's over here somewhere, but I set up a... Um, a uh what do you call it a, sh a shoreline connection it's not a real one it's one of those basically extension cords that you poke a hole in the wall and so i can plug into here and then there's basically a cord that comes into my truck and then i can plug stuff in from inside the truck so i've been trying to plug in the power when i'm at work and that's been helping me top off a little faster and then that'll roll over to the next day and then i'm getting enough solar to kind of get through the day and then on the days that i work which is about three to four days a week um i will plug into that connection while I'm there. I figured out a way to do it. At first I was dragging the Jackery out. Um, and then I was like, I wonder if I could just run an extension cord outside and then all I have to do is unplug it um, at the end of the night and put it back in my truck. And so that has worked out as far as like covering my power needs. Um, but one of the big ticket items I still wanna get is more solar for the roof um, and I want to reconfigure the solar up there. The solar that's up there was already always a temporary situation because I had to live in the box truck while I was building it out when I still had metal walls and was sleeping on a gross floor. <sighs> like I, I needed, I still needed power. I needed to run the YouTube channel. I needed to edit video. I needed to charge my cell phone, you know? Um, so the other, so one of the major things I want to do once all the other stuff is done, because what I have right now is working and I'm going to be working this particular show until after the 4th of July or the weekend of the 4th of July. So I think that's our closing weekend. I have to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Um, so I'm going to be working the show until then. Um, and hopefully if not, right at the beginning of July, maybe by the middle or end of July, I'll be able to buy the stuff I want to get from my solar system. I did uh, uh, send my generator in. It was covered by, I had a propane generator that died on me. It was covered by a manufacturer's warranty, but basically it had to go to a service center. That's a whole story I'm not going to get into right now. I'm going to save that for another video um, that I'm planning to do. But long story short, it is in for repairs. Um, and, well, repairs, observance. Basically, they take it in. Uh, the service center is going to take a look at it. If they find that it's a manufacturer problem, um, then the manufacturer will replace it because they have a two-year manufacturer warranty because this was some off-brand knockoff company. They were really hard to get a hold of, and it was out of the Home Depot warranty because as a generator, you only have 30 days to bring it back, and it died three months after I bought it. Um, so my propane generator is in that process. I really wish I bought the Champion in the first place. It was a little bit more pricey, but Champion is a more dependable company. So those are the two, that diversion is, those are the two big ticket items that I am still waiting on buying. I don't need the solar right now. The Jackery plus the solar on the roof I have right now is working. It's keeping me working. It's keeping the cell phone on. It's allowing me to use my laptop. I can upload the YouTube and I can supplement my power by charging when I have access to works power and I just charge. Um, so, so that is not like a huge big ticket item that I need to put together the money for right now. So that's been pushed to the back burner. And then the other uh, big ticket item, I think that was it. Like it's the power, what was the other thing I said? And, but also, uh, I want to do a general tune up on the truck and, um, a couple other things before I get on the, get on the road, because once the show closed, I just want to go have some me time. That's not paperwork or worried about repairs or any of that garbage. I just want to take some, some space for me. I'll probably still be catching up on build videos at that point, but I won't be having to worry about building while catching up on build videos, which is the space I'm in right now. So the catalytic is fixed. And on top of that, he added some extra welds and they're basically just little pieces of metal that, um, make it harder to cut through the pipe. Um, it's also an aftermarket catalytic, so hopefully they won't come after it. But there was a guy who had a Honda Element who came in, and he was like, man, they got me again. 
and he was like just worried about having to replace this catalytic again i think he saw them on his camera and like made a noise and they ran away i can't remember the context but somehow he caught them you know mid incident and he thought the catalytic was gone um and it turns out it was not successful because these extra welds that he puts around the pipe um that just makes it more annoying honest they have no functional purpose except making it a more annoying to cut through um actually did stop them in fact he found a blade embedded into uh one of the welds so it worked um and you know he he charged a couple hundred bucks or something to fix it something small um and but the guy didn't have to pay for a whole new catalytic for his honda element um so that even though it's an aftermarket catalytic which actually have less resale value than the original catalytic somebody bumping around in the dark for a quick you know grab may not pay that any attention and still may try to get it now it's clearly brand new because it's, it's very clean silver next to everything else underneath this old uh, uh old truck but that doesn't mean somebody's not going to try again so um his extra welds which there were two instances of people coming in where they thought their catalytic had been stolen again and the pipe had to be repaired but the catalytic was not successfully stolen so he did those additional welds for me as well um as a protective measure so i feel very at peace with my decision i don't have to worry about the catalytic anymore the catalytic is done it's repaired um and those extra protective welds are there and i even you know heard a guy come in you know over my visits to the shop where he thought his catalytic was just gone again and in fact those extra welds did stop them from stealing the catalytic and all he had to do was get a, a quick repair done to the little bit that they were able to cut into before their blade um broke off um so i feel slightly safer i still plan on getting a little it's in the mail actually there's a little motion alarm that it's for bikes or like anything like that where you can put it like close to an area that you want to set a motion alarm to um a vi I do have my new box that was beside the um the area where you can easily get down the truck so once I install that box it'll make it a little h harder to get underneath the truck um but I haven't installed it yet right now it's in storage um because also that's the generator box and so I kind of want to have the generator and um modify it and fit it uh before i put it back in so right now it's just in storage uh so that's basically the update i do have my catalytic um the catalytic got some protective welds added to it and um i'm feeling good about it it feels relieving to have it done um the truck actually sounds better since it got the new catalytic to be quite honest um and like it's much more it's, it's, the drive actually for some reason feels smoother and maybe that was just my experience of time without a catalytic at all and so it feels more extreme to me uh sort of sort of the difference in noise and all of those things um so yeah happy ending even though you know I had to spend some money to get it done speaking of money uh let's talk a little bit about this video sponsor Skillshare. So Skillshare, what makes it really special is that it is a curated community of creatives who have put together classes that you can take in these little bite-sized pieces for a busy life. It's a online learning community cultivated to learning with thousands of creatives that share their knowledge. And there's so so many topics like editing film and video, um animation, uh shooting with your camera. Like if you really want to get into cameras, like if you want to get beyond like just shooting on your cell phone and really get into the nitty-gritty or even get better at shooting on your cell phone, guess what? Skillshare has classes on that. But I decided to push things a little further and see if I could find anything that was relevant to me in my particular situation. I mean, living in this box truck is a part of my life on this YouTube channel. It is the YouTube channel. And one of the things I've always been iffy about is car maintenance. And guess what? I found a class on Skillshare that not only was about basic 
car maintenance. It was also taught by a woman and for women, which was kind of awesome. Now, it really wouldn't have helped me in this situation because what are you gonna do when your catalytic converter gets stolen except take it to a shop and get them to install a new one? But as far as like demystifying what I'm looking at when I open my hood and kind of really having a solid checklist on what to do, this class really helped me a lot. And I really, really love that. Also, because Skillshare is curated by professionals who have been, you know, vetted to provide this material, it also has no ads because all of that's being covered in the fact that you have a membership. And the learning doesn't end with the class. A lot of the teachers offer downloadables and additional information that you can access as a reference for when you've left the class. Now, when I first jumped on Skillshare, I immediately jump into the classes everybody looks at. Film, editing, that kind of stuff. The stuff that seems really relevant, but there's so much more to learn on Skillshare that can just enhance your personal skills. Because the thing I use to be creative is my life in this box truck. So being able to find a class that actually helped me feel more comfortable going out on the road is really, really awesome. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link below this video will get a free one month premium trial membership of Skillshare. So I have some other videos coming about the build, about things that are going on with the build, about you know how my power needs have been, a little bit of updates on the Blue Eddie and the Jackery because <sighs> Blue Eddie kinda, we'll see. Um, uh, so, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this one. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring. If you've made it here to the end, I'd like to thank you for watching the whole video all the way through to the end. It does matter with the YouTube algorithm that people watch till the end of the video. And it's one of the easiest things you can do to help out any YouTuber, not just me. If you like a YouTuber, just hang out and let the boring part at the end roll, if they have a boring part at the end. Maybe they're Chrome Valdez and it's just exciting from beginning to end. I don't know. But anyway, I'd like to thank everybody who watched this video, even if they only watched part of it and didn't make it this far. But if you did make it this far, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, like hitting that little bell and just trying to watch videos as frequently as possible because I am, as with all people on this platform, in service to the ever-changing, ever-moody, ever-monstrous YouTube algorithm. So your views, your thumbs up, your comments, your interactions with the video, and just plain old watching videos, it all matters. In addition to that, I'd like to thank my Patreon and YouTube membership supporters. Uh, I just still am blown away by the fact people want to support me in those ways. And I look forward to bringing you more positive videos in the future. See you next time.